Hi, my name is Michelle Dutrissa and I'm a demonstrator with Stamping Up in New South Wales, Australia. What I'd like to share with you today is how I made a cover for this bottle of wine. Now this is not one that's not quite finished, this is my prototype. But what I'm going to do is make a gift box cover for a bottle of wine to give at Christmas, Christmas time. So to be able to come up with this sizing, we need to do some mathematical measurements to start with. So what I want to show you very quickly how I came up with these measurements. And there's a couple of different measurements we need to get this started. The first measurement we need is a circumference around our bottle because that's what we want to make our cardstock and to cover and we need to get the measurements for that cardstock. The next measurement we need to get is the height of our bottle from the bottom of our bottle up to where the neck of our bottle starts. The third measurement we need is also from the bottom of our bottle, but just to where our bottle starts tapering towards the neck. So I've already taken these measurements. And what I measured, when I measured around the, the width of my bottle, the circumference of my bottle, I, my circumference came to 25 centimetres. My height of my bottle, from the bottom of the bottle, up to the top of the neck is 23 centimetres. My other height measurement, which is from the bottom of my bottle to where my bottle starts to taper, was 20 centimetres. So I'm going to call that height one and height two. So height one is from the bottom of my bottle to where the neck starts. Height two is from the bottom of the bottle to where it starts to taper. So this is going to give me, in the end, the measurements I need to go around the bottom and then also my height of my box, including this piece at the top, which is going to fold in towards the neck. So to work out those measurements, we're going to take our 25 centimetres and we need to add, that's a firm measurement, and we're going to need to add onto that an extra one centimetre. Now you could add on a little bit more, but the more you add, the looser this box is going to become around your bottle of wine. And at the moment, I've got that on there quite firmly. Okay, so there's not much movement. You can take it in and out, but that's quite nice because that centimetre has just um, been sort of spread all around that bottle. So that's a quite a good measurement to work with. So that's going to give us a circumference then of 26 centimetres. We're going to divide that 26 centimetres by six and that's going to give me the measurement of each one of these panels. And that came to 4.2 centimetres. Next, we're going to look at our height. And our height is 23 centimetres from the base up to this point up here. And we've got a difference of three centimetres from where the bottle starts to taper to where it goes up to the neck. So that's going to be in my height. I'm going to need to score down three centimetres to get that fold line there. Then I've got the length of my bottle, and then underneath my bottle I've gone four centimetres underneath. So on my height I need to add, so my 23 centimetres, so I'm looking at height one, I need to add 23, I've got my three already for the top, so I'm going to add on to that an extra four centimetres to go underneath my bottle. So that's going to make this finished length plus what goes underneath 27 centimetres. So that's going to give me my score lines. So I'm going to be scoring every 4.2 centimetres. And I'm going to have a score line at the top in my height, one at th three centimetres because I need to get that bottle length of 20. So if we're to look at this at a piece of cardstock, so if you can imagine, here was my line of my cardstock. So this, 
that's my bottom that's my top that whole line is going to measure 27 centimeters and what that is made up of is three centimeters at the top which is what's going to taper back into our neck because that's our difference between one and two our length of our bottle to where it starts to taper which is our height two which is 20 centimeters and then our extra four centimeters for the base of our bottle underneath in our width of our bottle we're going to go across and we're going to score it at every 4.2 centimeters now if you're going to use a 12 point um, a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock you would have to times that 4.2 by your six and add that one centimeter and add another one centimeter for your tab which we haven't added into this measurements over here as yet but we're going to do this with a piece of a4 paper cardstock because i believe that's what most people would have in stock so to do this on an a4 i wanted to have my joins evenly so i've got one join here and another join there so to do that i'm going to have i've got six of these panels all the way around and i'm going to have three on the front and then another three on the back so we need 4.2 by 3 and then we're going to add an extra one centimeter so this is that one centimeter tab so what we're going to have through here is 4.2 plus 4.2 plus 4.2 plus 1 which is 13.6 centimeters so if you're using a4 cardstock we need two pieces because we need a front and a back so we need two pieces by 13.6 centimeters by 27 centimeters so i've already cut one or actually i've already cut both those pieces to size so here we are i've got one piece here at 13.6 by 27 so now we're going to do some scoring to this so let me just bring in my trimmer so we're going to score across this 13 centimeter strip first so remember we need to score this at 4.2 three times so we're going to take our cutter completely away we're going to score it at 4.2 8.4 And then the last one is going to be at 8.4, 12.6. And that will leave us then with that one centimeter tab on the end. Now we've got both our length. So remember with our length, we said we needed three centimeters to the first score line. That's where it's going to taper up to the neck. And then we need that four centimeter piece at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around, take it right back up to the top of my trimmer again, and I'm going to score it at three centimeters. Now, if you want, you can open the arm out here, take this right along to 23 centimeters and score it again. But what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to flip it over and score four centimeters on the bottom. So there's all my scoring lines. So you're going to do that on two pieces of cardstock. The next thing you're going to do with this cardstock is we've got to trim some of this away. So what we're going to trim away, so here's our tab along here. And we're going to start off with taking away these tiny little pieces down at the ends. So this is my four centimeter piece down here. So I'm just cutting from the bottom up to that four centimeter square um, score line and removing that little tab and then I'm going to do the same at the top at the three centimeters so just removing that little one centimeter tab at the top just like that now back down here at the four centimeter square line what we do need to do is cut up each one of these slits up to that four centimeter mark 
So I'm just going to trim that right up to that four centimeter mark, just like that. Now at the top here, we just need to do a little bit more work. And I'm just going to grab my ruler here. And I'm going to measure in from my score line, which is now a cut line, one centimeter. I'm going to go back to my score line and make a mark at another centimeter. So right along here, and I'll show you why in a minute, we're going to just add, just make a little one centimeter mark. And that's going to just give me the area I want to notch out. And this is so when it tapers, it tapers in nicely. So I'm just cutting directly down to where to that three centimeter score line and just taking out those big wedges. Just like that. So I've actually done both of those and then we're just going to add some scoring tape and we're going to run that right along that tab. So when you score these length lines here, before you score your four centimeters at top and bottom, you may have to turn this around so then you have a tab on either side okay so you want to make sure that you've got your three scored sections plus your tab three scored sections plus your tab and now what we're going to do before we join these two together is we're going to pop put in punch a hole in the top here now stamping up don't have a hole punch so any sort of hole punch will do I've got my big one here and I'm just going to eyeball it and I want to cut a hole it's about a centimetre from the top down and it's roughly in the middle and we're going to do that with both pieces The next thing we're going to do before we join these pieces up is we're going to decorate this a little bit. So what I've got here is the red velvet, which we've got in our mini catalog at the moment. And I've cut this red velvet three millimeters smaller than each one of these sections. So remember those sections there are 4.2 wide, but from this score line to that score line, it's 20 centimeters. So each one of these is 3.9 by 19.7 now all these measurements and everything will be on my blog so you will be able to follow this and all I'm going to do is grab each one of these put some glue on it and it's a lot easier to do this while this is flat than trying to do it once we've got our box together so we're just going to pop that on there And line that up in the middle and we're going to do this with all six now the reason why I wanted to do this box is when I was a child my mother used to make every Christmas time for the garbage man that used to come the bread man that used to deliver our bread the milkman and the fruit and veggie man she used to buy a bottle of wine a bottle of beer sorry not wine bottle of beer for each of those men and she would decorate them every year up to be as santa so she used to get crepe paper and she'd wrap each one up with crepe paper she'd put um, little black feet on the bottom and the one thing I really remember is that how much she used to search 
for Santa heads. Every year we'd be looking for wrap wrapping paper that had Santa heads on it and she'd buy it and um, cut the number of Santa heads that she needed and the rest was put away for the following year. And so she would wrap this bottle up with crepe paper in red. She would do a strip of crepe, crepe paper or cardboard in black to go around its middle. And then she would attach these Santa heads on the top. And um, that's what was left out every Christmas for the men that used to come around and um, deliver or um, yeah, deliver our bread and, and so forth or pick up our garbage. So this is sort of a little bit of a, a reminisce on that um, from my childhood. So I hope you enjoy it and try and make one of these yourself. So there we go. So there's our red velvet all on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel off one of these. I'm not going to do both just as yet. I just want to get one of these off. And I'm going to line up this along that score line. Okay, so once you've done that, you can flip this over and get a bone folder and just push that down to make sure that you've got a good secure join there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in and fold that one in. And I should have before this actually have folded all my score lines, which I haven't done. I've done on one side, but not on the other. I just fold up all these score lines as well. And the ones here up the top. So let's go back to where we were. We're going to fold that in there and we're going to fold this one down. So we're going to peel off the backing of this strip of tear and tape. Fold that over and join that up just like that. And that's what's going to give us the start of our box. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to, there's my two sides. So I'm going to fold in all of these four side pieces. So these two pieces are going to be my front and my back. And I'm going to put a little bit of tear and tape onto this section here. So I just want to fold all those out of the road. Now you probably want to put a couple of pieces of tearing tape on here because you do want to make sure that that's nice and secure. So we're going to Bring all those sides of our box in and bring that one in and whoops, what I might do is put my bottle of wine in there. Might need to put a little bit more somewhere else as well. So let's just see how we go. Just gonna pop that bottle of wine just to hold that in and we're going to bring all those in. Okay. I think I'm just going to pop another bit of piece of tape just in there. Just peel off the back of that. So we've got all those pieces in. We're going to bring that piece down, secure that there. Just use that bottle of wine in there just to give you a bit of um, strength or something really firm to push against and we're just going to take these two pieces off
and we're going to bring that piece there and just give that a real good firm push now what I've also cut for this I've decided not to do the feet like my mum did because I just we didn't have an oval punch that was going to be big enough but I have got the largest circle and I've die cut that also in the real red because this is all in real red and we're going to put a good amount of adhesive on the bottom of this and this is going to cover up all that mess at the bottom and also stabilize all of those so if I turn this upside down I hope you can see popping that circle on there and that's just going to make that look take that out so it's just it is just a fraction bigger but that's okay so that's going to give our box that nice firm shape so let's pop our wine back in there whoops just a little bit tall for the camera and I'm going to use black and white gingham ribbon so again I've just got to remember where my sides are so there's one join there and the other join is there and I'm going to thread my ribbon which I'm going to go from the side here so I'm going to thread this ribbon through all of these holes and I'm just going from top in bring that around so we've got a nice even piece there and I've probably got about 60 to 70 centimeters worth of ribbon there and I'm actually going to take once I've gone all the way around I'm going to hoping you can see that I'm going to come back again like it's coming underneath there but I'm going to go this last one back in through there now I know that won't make sense if we're going to tie a bow because it's all but you'll see in a minute what we're going to do so I'm just going to leave that for the moment like that and now we're going to do some more decorating because he doesn't if you haven't already gathered he's going to look a little bit like Santa by the time we're finished so what I've got here is I've cut a Santa belt and to cut this belt what I've cut this is three centimeters wide and it is well in inches it's 11 10 and 3 quarter inches but in centimeters let me just measure this up sorry I should have had this all done but it's actually 27 and a half centimeters and I've scored it from one end at that 4.2 all the way along now I've made a belt buckle for it and the way I did that is I took a piece of the gold this paper here it comes in rose gold and gold it's a gold and rose gold gold six by six metallic specialty paper so i've taken a piece of that which is four centimeters square Let me move my our wine out of the road and with my paper trimmer i've worked with this upside down so i've got my centimeters there I've lined this up at half a centimetre mark on my measurement just here. I don't know whether you can actually see it. And then I've taken the cutting blade and you've got a little arrow on top and a little line and I've lined that up with the one centimetre on my um, plastic ruler here. And then pop that down and taken half a centimetre and gone down to three and a half cent three and a half centimeters okay so i've done that on that side which has given me a nice little slit so it's just giving me that little slit there and then turned it around and done the same thing on the other side 
putting my marker on half a centimeter and then cutting until three and a half centimeters and that just gave me that little slit on either side that I could actually slip my cardstock through. Now it could be a little bit tight if it is you may just need to get your snips and just snip it a little bit bigger but as you can see that will fit on there just like that and fit in that 4.2 spot. So what I'm going to do that's my middle one so I've got one two three and then that's my fourth one then one two so it's not middle middle but it's um pretty close to the middle i'm going to put a bit of glue all the way along on this and then i'm going to put some of the tearing tape at the end of this because I want to make sure that this is really secured on the back. I just need to trim that tape down. It's got a little bit overboard there. So let's bring in our bottle. So that's not that's my front panel there and I've got those just to the one side. And I want to have that sitting about there. Whoop. Let's try that again. You might need to hold this a little bit just to make sure that that is going to be secure. Pop that down there and then that's going to go right across I'm going to just peel off the backing if you didn't want to use liquid glue you could have just used the um, tear and tape to go right through the middle but it will eventually stick and then I'm just going to bring that down just on top of that so that's forming our Santa's belt Looking pretty good so far, I think. What about you? Do you think they look good? Love to let, love for you to let me know. So the other thing that I've cut for this is I've cut some little buttons, and I've cut the buttons using the dies from the all dressed up dies. Now within the all dressed up dies, you've got two die cut button sizes and there's two of each button so I've used the larger button this one here and I've cut about six um, buttons in black basic black cardstock so we're going to take our buttons and we're just going to pop couple of buttons up through the top here and then another couple of buttons down the bottom so there's our Santa's suit but if we're going to make this as a gift for somebody we really need to add a gift tag to this so again, let me just move our bottle out of the road and I'll bring in what we're going to be playing using next or playing with next. So what I've done is I've cut a tag in basic white and I've cut it using the largest tag from the tailored tags really love this tag I'm going to give this tag a little bit of color so the colors that I've chosen to work with on this tag of course is our real red because that's the color we've been using in all our cardstock some old olive pear pizzazz and soft succulent so I just wanted to give this car this tag just a little bit of personality and we're going to add a 
bit of color to this so I'm just using my brushes blending brushes and I'm just putting a little bit of ink onto my tag wiping a bit of it off and then I'm just going to go in a circular motion and go around the tag now I'm not doing the top of my tag but I'm going to do up the sides and the base you can put a little bit extra color if you wanted to at that base and then just having it going blending it back into that white as the tag goes up you can color this as much as you want as dark make it as dark as what you want so for me I'm quite happy with that so it's just to give it a little bit of a little bit of color just blend it out a little bit more but I didn't want to take all the color all the way up I just wanted to have a sort of a bit of a blended out look now we need to if we're going to have a tag we need to put a little bit of a sentiment on it first off what we're going to do is we're going to flip our tag over now this stamp I've taken from the Be Jolly stamp set and it's just a little to and from and I'm going to stamp it on the back so we know who it's going to go to we still need our real red and the sentiment I've chosen and this sentiment is from the Christmas to remember and I've chosen have a jolly a holly jolly Christmas so that might give you a bit of a hint what we're going to do next so we're going to turn this tag over now I'm going to put this on at a little bit of an angle and there is a reason for that and that's because when I put my tag onto my bottle I'm going to have it hanging probably at a little bit of an angle so we've got that on there and I'll show you what I mean so when we put this on here I want that to sort of hang a little bit at an angle like that so the next thing we're going to stamp is we're going to make stamp some holly so let me grab a piece of basic white which I did have sitting somewhere here there we go so I've just got a scrap of basic white here and what we're going to use is we're going to use pear pizzazz and I've taken the holly stamps from the Christmas season stamp set so we're going to be using this holly leaf here and then we have these vein pieces here and we're also going to be putting some real red berries on there now remember this is a photopolymer stamp set so you might need a mat underneath but i've got lots of layers of paper here so i think i should be right and we're going to stamp our holly leaves on there now this is a distinctive stamp set so it has got a little bit of um, color variation there which is what it's meant to have so now we're going to take our old olive and we're going to put our holly veins in line those up and stamp And the last thing we need to stamp off is some holly so let's grab our real red again then what you can do is put your dies on there and run that through your cut and emboss machine now I've already done that just to save time so here's our tag and I've already got some pieces of holly here that I have stamped there's our berries 
and our holly leaves there. So now we're just going to adhere these onto here. So we're going to just take our large piece of holly. Don't put too much glue on there because you don't want it oozing out. We're going to pop that one there. A bit of glue on the back of that one. That can go there like that. And we're going to add a dimensional to our back of our berries. So I'm just using my mini dimensionals for that. I'm just going to add a couple of them on here. Put one on there. And one on there. Just to give it a little bit of height. And add those berries just in there. And then what I also have done is I had a spare button or a few spare buttons and I've added a little bit of baker's twine and made a bow. So I've just made a little bow there and I'm just going to pop that right there at the top on that top berry just to finish that off. So let's bring in a bottle of wine again. Let's move some of these out of the road. Let's bring in our wine. Let's lay that down there. And we're going to thread both of these Doesn't want to play with me. Thread those through our tag hole there. Let me just if I snip these off both at the same. Might have a bit of luck at doing that. What do you think? So I'm bringing that through together and just tying a nice big bow. And that tag is going to help um, hold that nice and close there. So you can trim then your tails and there's my gift. Now if you wanted to you could put a dimension on there just to hold it down but we've got our to and from underneath so I think that would be fine. So I hope you've liked that today. I hope you found this interesting and um, wanting to give this a go yourself as I said this is uh, bringing back a memory uh, for me when my mother used to make Christmas gifts for the um, the baker and the fruit man and garbage man and milkman so I hope you've enjoyed that as I said all the information um, measurements and everything will be on my blog and uh, hope you have fun making Okay, thanks for joining me today.